kind of trying to figure out the, the you know, looking at poor John Gamora. That hair piece is real beautiful, people, okay? And yes, it's all him. I, because I saw him get in a fight and they were pulling hair like crazy and it never came off, okay? Thank you so much, John Gamora. All right, beautiful people, we're gonna just keep it going. Uh, so your next comic, he has a, a fabulous, fabulous show down in the 408 in the South Bay in the city of Campbell once a month. It's called the Off the Hook Comedy Show. It's a hot, hot show if you're ever in the uh, Campbell soup in the 408, please do check it out. His name is Johnny Corn. Everybody. Hi, San Francisco. Hey. Hey. Oh, response. That's good. Uh, my name is Johnny Corn. Uh, a little bit about me. I, I, I'm Irish and Catholic. As, as a good Catholic, they tell you you have to give up something for Lent. So this year I gave up my New Year's resolution. <laughs> Take a second. <laughs> Now, uh, I, I'm Irish and it has its advantages. We had Multicultural Ethnic Day with uh, with my day job where you bring in food from your culture. So one person bought some kimchi, you know, that sort of thing. It became my turn. I bought in a box of Lucky Charms. <laughs> okay. Um, I, I grew up in an old, uh, in an uh, evangelical Christian neighborhood. You know, they say stuff like, you're going to hell because you haven't accepted Jesus Christ as a personal savior. And they say this to like Jewish friends of mine. My thing is, if you want someone Jewish to convert over to Christianity, Instead of telling them they're going to help, tell them they can eat bacon. Yeah, yeah, right? Right? Because bacon gets hot filling. Bacon, less tomato, bacon and eggs. Six degrees of Kevin Bacon. I don't know. A, a way to a man's heart is through his stomach, is what I'm saying. You know? uh, why can't that be true for religion, right? Um, but, but Catholics have holidays, and, and sometimes they're their own, and sometimes they actually share them with uh, the, the national holidays. You know, a good example of that is Columbus Day. I never really understood Columbus Day because he gets a holiday for getting lost. <laughs> He's trying to find a spice route to India and ends up in the Caribbean. Typical man didn't ask directions. All he had to do was go into any 7-Eleven and they could have told him where India was. You know? uh, personally, I want to come out with the Columbus GPS. It, Columbus GPS. It sends you where you never intended to go. <laughs> Formerly Apple Maps. <laughs> Thanksgiving is another holiday that doesn't make uh, very much. Someone's clapping back there. That's going fantastic. Okay. Um, what was it? Oh, Thanksgiving is a great holiday in that you know you're thankful for what what you have. I'm, I'm all for that. But the first Thanksgiving, the story of the first Thanksgiving, it's about white people because it's always about white people, right? It's about white people that were hungry and the Indians fed them. You know what they say, once you feed them, they'll never go away. <laughs> you know, we never talk about the second Thanksgiving. You know, maybe we're uncomfortable. It's, it's the, when the Indian people were really cold, and the white people gave blankets. <laughs> Too soon for a smallpox joke. Okay, I mark that off on my head. Uh, okay, so how about this? Christmas. Parents, you tell your kids all year long, don't talk to strangers, and then you sit them on Santa's lap and you wonder why they cry. <laughs> is it that or is it because Santa's creepy? Creepy. Yeah, he is creepy. <laughs> Who else can get away with saying stuff like, sit on my lap, little girl, and uh, tell Santa what you really want. <laughs> Have you been naughty? Do you want to be in my nicest? Do you want to suck on my candy cane? <laughs> Do you want to... Fill, have me fill your stocking with something yummy. You know, I've been watching you. I know when you're sleeping. I know when you're awake. It's just creepy, am I right? Yes. No? Now, we had the 4th of July not too long ago, and I'm not going to say anything bad about the 4th of July. It's a great holiday, you know, birth of a nation and all that, and there's nothing more American than buying a Japanese car on the 4th of July. I'm just saying. I had a little extra time today, so I was walking around, and I saw a kid on a leash. Did you guys see that? There's a kid on a leash. I Personally, I prefer my kids to be free-range. No, because then they taste better. See, because you put an apple in their mouth, put them on artisserie spit, they taste just like chicken, I tell you. Did, did I go too far on that one? Okay, I have an overactive imagination. Okay, I do. I have an overactive imagination, so my thought, but I'm also ADD, so my thought went from that to, to prostitutes. <laughs> Now there's a study that came out that said that the highest rate of STDs among prostitutes is in Utah and by far the lowest is in Nevada. So I guess what I'm saying, if you really want to gamble, go to Utah. <laughs> right? But getting, on, getting back onto the kid thing, people ask me if I had any uh, kids of my own. I don't have any biological kids of my own, but if I ever did, 
I videotaped the birth. Because then when my kids ask me where babies come from, <laughs> see, it's like people are going, ooh. That's exactly the point. I'd be guaranteed not to become premature grandfather, <laughs> right? For good measure though, I would name my firstborn daughter Chlamydia. <laughs> No, it's the friendliest sound of the STDs. It sounds exotic, you know? I, and, and I can guarantee that no guy would come in her until she's 40. Yeah. But if I had kids, okay, I'll stop on that one. Uh, if, if I had kids, though, I, I would sit them down at about age 20 and tell them all the shit that's gonna happen to the body by age 50, just so they're aware of it, okay? Uh, for example, you're gonna lose hair where you want hair, and you're gonna get hair in other places. You're going to have to be on medication where a fatal event is one of the side effects. <laughs> this is mostly for guys, but when you're done peeing, or you, you think you're done peeing, you're not done peeing. <laughs> Even the exams get more evasive, you know? For example, the prostate exam. And, and, and my thing about the prostate exam is, uh, do, do, do you tip afterwards? <laughs> if you really like it, can you get on like a bi-monthly basis? If you can get it on a bi-monthly basis, does that mean that Kaiser's a full-service HMO? <laughs> These are questions I think that need to, to be answered. I'm just saying. But, um, but a little bit more about me. I actually started doing stand-up comedy uh, October 1987. And so I've been doing this for 28 years. I started actually in a bar in, well actually a, a restaurant and bar in San Jose. 28 years later, I host a show in a bar in Campbell. So I guess you can say, my career's going exactly as I planned. <laughs> I remember when, when uh, a good friend of mine, uh, my mentor came up to me and she said, when you're known out there for what you've done here, cherish it. Because the first time you recognize it out there, that means that you're starting to make a difference. You're starting to, to get traction. So just soak it, soak it in, uh, be in the moment. In a related story, I was over at the Dollar Tree. <laughs> Don't judge me. <laughs> I'm a broke comic. I was at the Dollar Tree, and this guy comes up to me, and he says, you're John Corn. And I'm thinking to myself, this is fantastic. This is what this person was talking about. Oh my God. And then he said, you suck. <laughs> I know, right? So I turned to him and I said, yes, and I blow too. <laughs> I used to be a vacuum salesman. That's actually a clean joke. <laughs> you know? With the very first thing I ever did on stage, uh, was, we had a couple comics ago uh, before that did like impersonations, right? The very first thing I'm gonna do, because you guys are lovely and there's so many of you, I'm gonna do the first thing I ever did on stage. It was Ronald Reagan, who was President of the United States, Nancy Reagan was the First Lady, this is 1987, and the first thing I ever did was Ronald Reagan as a pervert. So because you guys are so cool, I'm gonna do this for you right now, okay, right? This is the first thing I ever did on stage. Oh Nancy, oh Nancy, I'm gonna smack that ass, I'm gonna smack that ass. I have the handcuffs, come here Nancy, why are you running? That was the first thing I ever did on stage. And the reaction is very much like it is right, right now. You know? I'm Johnny Corn. I'm gonna leave you guys with this thought for the day, and before I get to it, make sure you check me out, Comic Johnny Corn on, uh, on what is it, Twitter. And then uh, just look up Johnny Corn with an H, J O H N N Y Corn, uh, on YouTube. I would love for you to like me, really, really like me. But I'll leave you with this thought for the day: the best protection against identity theft is bad credit. I'm Johnny Corn. Have a great tomorrow. Thank you so much. One more time.